Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey, good to see you. Hi, Chief. Hi, Leah. Hi. Hey, it is great to see y'all. And I'm super geeked about this, this uh, interview today because uh, I grew up in an R&B household. <laughs> Uh, my mom played R and B all the time. We were watching Video Soul, Soul Train, all the, all the old. Uh, well, it just it just brings me back to my childhood. And uh, so our next guest was very very prevalent in my household. So I'm super excited about him. Uh, Julie, please introduce uh, today's guest. Chief, we do have an R and B legend with us today. He's a singer, songwriter, record producer, and a radio host. Please help me welcome the iconic LB Sure to Chief Chat. Hey. Uh, uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me, um, and uh, I need to take you everywhere with that introduction. <laughs> <laughs> We're happy to travel. <laughs> yeah, Julia yep. Leo, go Sign anywhere. Us up. <laughs> Al, thanks so much for joining us, and everybody watching, you know what to do. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, share your love with Al in the comments and any questions that you have for him, we'll be reading those live. Follow us and enable your notifications so you stay in the know about our lineup. Chief Chats are every week and we have a military exclusive lineup just for you. We don't want you to miss any of it. So I'll be, sh I'll be sure. Welcome I'll to Chief be. Chat. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you join us today. And can you let our viewers know where you come? calling us from? Oh, uh, from the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, man, in Vegas. Wow. Is, is it Where still hot, hot out there? there? It's hot, it's hot <laughs> as fish grease. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Al, you, you, you always been popping like fish grease your whole your whole career. So uh, you, you in the right spot. And so I, I heard uh, you. you got some military in your family. Uh, that you want to shout out? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My, uh, well, I, I, she's still a baby to me, but my baby sister, Amber, uh, is an army vet. Um, she served in, I think, Iraq, uh, and just, uh, you know, for the country, of course. And, uh, my dad, who is, uh, was Coast Guard, uh, and, uh, and also have a very, very dear friend who actually worked for the Obama administration, Sergeant Major Michelle S. Jones, uh, she was assistant to the Secretary of Defense, but she was also the highest ranking female officer in all of the military. And, uh, oh. and uh, you know, took me on a tour of the Pentagon and so on and so forth. And uh, since we've been great friends for many, many years, uh, met, met many moons ago at the Essence Festival. And, uh, it, you know, just shared, you know, shared a lot with me in terms of, you know, how dedicated, uh, the soldiers are and so on and so forth and you know being out on the on the front line and you know so first and foremost i'd like to say thank you to all of the service men and women around the globe um to you know as you see you know we're in a bit of chaos a little bit everywhere whether it has to do with the pandemic or whether it has to do with uh just the climate of what's going on in, in, in territories and uh, so we we truly appreciate you and we appreciate you know the efforts and, and the protection and so on and so forth. So, and we keep you in, in prayer and abundance. Well, well, thank you for that shout out. And uh, like I said, shout out right back to your family members, uh, your sister, your, your father, and, uh, and and your good friend who uh, you met at the Essence Festival. And I'm very, very uh, uh, familiar with the Essence Festival being a Louisiana native. native. So it, that, that's a wonderful okay. time. Uh, I, I would love to see you down there if, if, if they still, you know, as, as this pandemic rolls rolls out, so. Yeah, well, one day soon, I hope hope to, uh, because we're actually in talks right before the uh, pandemic, you know, really kind of took over. We're in talks about me uh, hosting an evening and performing and so on and so forth. And, you know, it's something I've always wanted to do. 
Uh, every time I've gone, I've had an incredible, incredible time seeing, you know, thousands and thousands of people come in peace and gather and just enjoy the music and the festivities. And, you know, of course, New Orleans is so rich with history and music and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just an amazing place to be. In addition to, um, you may be familiar with this, probably one of my favorite activities on planet Earth is to fish. So I spent a great deal of time on Lake Pontchartrain pulling out those logs. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, we just had we just had a a fisherman on the show a couple a couple episodes ago and uh he, he does fly fishing. So I I haven't tried fly fishing before, uh, but apparently Leah and Julie uh are going to get their outfits together and they got a girls trip planned without me to go fly fishing. Oh, okay. <laughs> But if you want to come, Al, you can come. You, you're more than welcome to come fly fishing with me and Leah. We'll meet. You, we'll meet up. I, I appreciate. I appreciate the invitation. I'll bring the bait and let's go hit the lake. Man, awesome! I, I was afraid invite. you were gonna say, "Sorry, Chief. Maybe next time. Next time you have a hit, you have hits, then you can come, Chief. Sorry. Oh, oh my gosh. Got you. Got you. No, we can't leave Chief out. Chief got a role with his twin brother, Al. Yeah. <laughs> so, Al, you turned down a football scholarship to pursue your music career. Um, that clearly turned out to be a good decision for you. So where did your love for music come from and what encouraged you to pursue music so passionately? Um, you know, obviously, as a youngster, you know, I was very much into sports uh, and, uh, you know, did pretty well. You know, I had some letters of interest and so on and so forth. And, and uh, so imagine having to uh, tell, you know, my mom, you know, as a single mother at that point where I have to tell her, you know, she sees an opportunity, you know, for, to me to further my education. And then I have to tell her, well, no mom, I'm going to write a song and we're going to eat. And, uh, you know, she looked at me like I had several heads, you know, but, um, you know, but she, she put so much belief into, uh, my efforts, uh, in addition to, you know, it was a balance, you know, after school from football practice to baseball practice, to basketball practice, and then being in the basement with, uh, you know, the legendary DJ Eddie F and Mr. Kyle West, you know, where it all started uh, in Money Earned in Mount, a place called Money Earned in Mount Vernon, which is a four square mile uh, country. I like to call it, we have our own country in Mount Vernon, right outside <laughs> of the farm. Right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it was it just something, it was something that, you know, a passion. I mean, even till today, uh, you know, I have several friends who are in the league, you know, and in, in, in the professional leagues. And, you know, I still think I can get out there because I can I can I think I can get that football 50 yards out still. I don't know about okay. my, my rotator cut, but, but uh, <laughs> you know, nowadays, you know, after, after 50, you, that just hurts for a few days. You know, when you're younger, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a whole different story. But, uh, you know, you just get put some ice on it and keep it moving. So. But um, yeah, no, I, I truly, I love the game and I love to watch. And, you know, even to the point where I think a few years ago when they were launching the, uh, it was another football league. I was really concerned. I went and bought all this equipment. I was considering to go and try out, and, and you know, because I understand <laughs> defenses and so forth. And I know it was kind of ridiculous, but but I was like, yeah, I think I can still do it. And then I went to one of the games and I sat on the 50 yard line and I watched them hit each other. And I said, I love music. So, so who's your team, uh, Al? Well, you know, at being a New Yorker, I have to be loyal. I have, I, you know, I have friends on all, all the different, uh, you know, friends and associates on, on different teams. But being a New Yorker, I've got to love the Jets, the Giants, you know, the Nets, you know, uh, you know, the Yankees, the Mets, you know, anything, anything New York, I got to rock with. So, uh, oh, you, you don't Liberty. have to pick one. I, I thought, I thought in New York you had to pick one. You're, no, no, well, no, just no. You, you, Not you're, if you're Al, be you're, sure. You're, <laughs> Well, well, I just want to make sure that I, I continue to receive invitations from each single one now. So, uh, but I always get to when I when I'm in New York, I get to uh, go to the, to the games and so on and so forth. And it's just I, I love to see uh, people understand the preparation for professional athletes, um, and, and you know, because you can get in shape to do something, you know, like I've been doing with myself and so on and so forth. But an athlete in shape, or like when you see these these young people in the Olympics, it's truly a tremendous undertaking um, to get in that type of shape. So big shout out to Simone, uh, you know, and then it's specifically related to her paying attention to, to, to mental health 
and uh, and inspiring a lot of young ladies around the globe to, to do do the same. Um, I was very proud to see, and you know, and uh, uh, it's, it's unfortunate you hear some of the comments and things of that nature of people who were very ignorant and you know thought she abandoned the sport. But you you, you got to put you got to be in charge of your star play. You've got to put you first, and uh, I'm very mm -hmm. proud of her that she did that. So um, kudos and applause to her, and she still whooped that that whooped everybody anyway so it was good <laughs> <laughs> well so music has been good for you um you achieved success very early in your career can you share with us what obstacles you faced along the way before hitting it big oh man you know what um what's really funny is that so my, my business partner you know dj edf we you know we have a you know few things you know ventures we're working on and we always talk about it because it was we started you know in the basement um and we were these young young kids you know out of high school who just had a passion for uh creativity and uh i remember you know kind of the way it all started we were working on some demos um this guy you may know uh, named you know mr legendary heavy d uh oh yeah in the board Red, rest in peace king the king of Mount Vernon, we call him the king of Mount Vernon. But Eddie and I were you know, working on some demos and, and production and uh, he was playing, you know, he was spinning some records and so on and so forth. And we happened to be listening to some, some uh, like me, Beastie Boys and Slick Rick and, and, you know, Run DMC. And, you know, we were, you know, he, and he was like, you know, the best DJ in Mount Vernon at that point, especially as, as a young cat. And uh, one day the basement flooded and we had to scurry to get, you know, something happened. One of the pipes burst. And we had to, you know, clean up the wires and so on and so forth and grab the wires. And I wound up finding in the water this thing called, now the young people may not know what this is, this thing called the yellow pages. And uh, so I picked up the yellow pages and I'm going through the yellow pages and just decided to look up the company. Eddie was playing these records and I looked up the company that was spinning on, on, the, on the record on the Technique 1200. And it was called Def Jam, and um, just decided to call. You know, for uh, you know, I think I think at that point ignorance was amazing because who, who calls a record company and gets somebody on the phone? You know, yeah, every, yeah. Every I'm, I'm like, are they picking up? <laughs> yeah, no. So I, no. So listen, after twenty tries, you know, twenty different calls. You know, I kept calling, kept calling, and uh, but the funny part of this story is 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 the best, which is. You know, I kept calling and, and getting some direction from this gentleman. He kept picking up and, he, you know, he, he became cool, you know, and I, and I said, uh, you know, then he asked, you know, obviously we finally got, you know, established a, a rapport, somewhat of a rapport. And, and he uh, he asked, you know, my name and I said, my name is Al B. Shaw. And he said, what the heck is an Al B. Shaw? And he said, uh, and I said, and I'm from a place called Money Earning Mount Vernon. And he says, I mean, all y'all bougie cats who think y'all from the Bronx. <laughs> so, like, so he always had, he always had this, this funny comeback. And then I said, yeah, I said, well, we have a group here, you know, and I, cause I wasn't a part of the group per se, but I was part of the production. Um, and, and, and so, but I see a group named Heavy D and the boys. He said, what, the fat boys? I said, no, 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 it's something different. You know, and, you know, but every day it was something different. So finally, you know, I'm asking him, I'm like, well, who are you? He said, um, you know, because I kept asking him, I said, hey, listen, you know, I'd really like to speak to Mr. Russell Simmons. You know, it's a meeting, you know, I just kept being persistent with it. And so he says to me, well, my name is Andre Harrell. And I said, I, don't, I want to talk to Russell Simmons. So we have joked about that, you know, for, for so many years after that. Rest in peace, Andre. Well, yeah, rest in peace, to Andre. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, but that that was kind of the beginning of it all, you know, with the uptown, the whole uptown, uh, uptown saga. But and and then you know, because of DJ Eddie F, Eddie Eddie was basically the glue, um, who you know kind of put everything together and put me on, like Benita Applebaum, I always say that, uh, and and was like kind of the structure and backbone, you know, with with of course Andre Harrell and uh, Jimmy Jane, you know, Jimmy Jimmy Love, and and and, and the entire staff we had, you know. And basically what we did with Uptown Records was, was we wanted to create what was what you could reference as a boutique label version of what Motown because that, that covered such a vast array of, of uh, you know, cultures. And we wanted to do that with Uptown. And I think we accomplished that. I, I like to use the term, we brought the streets to Wall Street. 
you know, we, we started yeah. with nothing. You know, what it was the song say started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, we turned it into a, a billion dollar company. And um, it, was, it was just something amazing to me. It's a blessing just to be a part of. So. Absolutely. So, um, so that man, was you the got obstacle. some heavy hitters. The obstacle, the obstacle was the, the, the having clean up all that water <laughs> in the beginning, and then obviously, you know, just the, the, the business is what it is, and it's it, you know, um, you know, hopefully in, in the future, you know, we've been working on some business initiatives to um, assist other artists in, in you know getting their back royalties and things of that nature and stuff, and we're working with um, synchronicity and. and we call it the gentleman King James, and you know, it's it's just a pretty you know magnificent undertaking to because having to imagine trying to get somebody on the phone at a, at a, at a Universal Music Group, and you know, you sold you sold you know fifty million records in the last you know thirty years, you know, so, but um yeah, it's but technology has allowed you know obviously now everything has portals and so on and so forth and 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 better accounting and so on and so forth. So hopefully there's no fuzzy math and hopefully some of these artists can you know, <laughs> and, get their, uh, and get their just due because they put in so much work. Absolutely. So that, that gives me some inspiration though, to keep keep emailing uh, Rock Nation and Def Jam so they, till they answer, answer me. So I'm just gonna keep so, sending those emails. Until until Jay-Z or Beyonce or somebody picks up and says, <laughs> hey, and, and you're like, who's this? This is Beyonce. I don't want to talk to Beyonce. I want to talk to Jay Z. Say, I don't want to talk to Jay Z. I want to talk to Beyonce. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, so let's talk about your debut single, Night and Day. Which, man, it, I, I, we played that so many times at the household. But uh, it was number one in uh, on the charts in twenty two countries. Um, so, wow, what was you know, like? yeah. Good. No, no. So, what was it like for a young Al Be Sure uh, being so new to the business and having that type of like? overnight success well i won't say overnight success because i'm sure you you've been grinding but to see your your, your song take off like what, what does that feeling feel like well you know uh i just recalled because i saw it uh I, I filmed an episode of what's called unsung on the tv one network oh, yeah. and i remember seeing uh benny medina uh you know who's the you know the legendary manager um talk about how it all started with the single and then uh, my tape being entered into my cassette tape was, you know, Eddie always, Eddie F always kept my cassette tape, you know, handy. And every time, you know, such an unselfish guy, every time he was around record executive, whoever else, he would always, Hey, check out my, 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 my brother, man. Yo. And it was always, you know, he, he kept the tape going. Um, but what happened was my tape got entered into a contest called Sony innovators. And, uh, you had, you know, the final, the two final judges were uh, a, a jazz legend by the name of Herbie Hancock and also uh, <laughs> a gentleman by the name of Quincy Jones. Those are the two final judges, and, uh, and, oh, and the initial judges were like Tom Joyner, and uh, you know, it, it was just it was amazing. So they broke it down to a field of like maybe fifty-one cassette tapes, and uh, Herbie Hancock chose uh, uh, this incredible musician named Terrence Blanchard uh, to as the a jazz innovator. This was the first year. This is the onset year. And uh, Quincy Jones chose I'll Be Sure. Now go figure that. This kid, this yeah. kid from Money Earning Mount Vernon, and this guy, you know that that, that, that did that uh, that thriller thing. You know, this yeah, is yeah. your. He got a few, so he got a few things up. going on. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know, Mark <laughs> Squad, Thriller, Sanford and Son. You know, uh, it's my party, and I'll cry if I want. I mean, just listen. I mean, the list, the catalog goes on. But oh yeah. It was such an honor to have Quincy Jones choose me as the first Sony innovator in, on, in the world. And, um, but what it did, it gave us a great deal of momentum uh, as it relates to the upcoming release of the single. It already kind of validated us very much so because it was like winning the Grammy first out, um, very specifically because Quincy Jones was behind it. And, and you know, uh, just, just a simple fact that he looked at my music. I remember there was one song, you know, called Ooh, This Love Is So, and he coined the phrase. He said, it's the French blues in terms of the chord structure. And, uh, you know, just he just just being under the tutelage and, and kind of sitting around and watching him in the studio and so on and so forth. And, you know, I had the best lessons in life in terms of, you know, watching Eddie F, DJ and engineer. And then he and I furthered our education and went to a place called Center for Media Arts and studied engineering, which actually helped us in the future as producers because we understood frequency and 
boards and trying to, and when we were mixing songs, we kind of knew what we wanted. So, um, and then obviously Andre, after I got a deal, Andre sent me to go meet a gentleman by the name of Teddy Riley. And, uh, and then I, I got there and I remember sleeping on Teddy's couch for six months watching him and he then he taught me like song arrangement and some other stuff and programming. So it was just, you know, it was really nice to have it from several levels and all around and obviously with Kyle West, who was my, you know, my, my, my first cousin and, and writing partner on, you know, most of the catalog as well. Um, so again, it's just been, it's just been a complete blessing related to th that part of the journey and the launch. So the support system, and then obviously with Uptown Records and so on so forth, and, um, you know, just having that as the vehicle, then that became the place to be of the Uptown Records. Everybody, you know, and then every label, everybody we released from, you know, Father MC to Heavy D and the Boys to Al B. Shore to Guy to Mary J. Blige. What happened was we became the new standard and all the record companies had to have a, a Joe to see and I'll be sure and Eddie F and Heavy D the boys, uh, you know, like they, they were patterning themselves after us and we watched that, and that which I saw it was a special that was on BET um, called Inside the Label and I, I saw how it just, you know, and obviously they're amazing producers in the industry, but all the record companies, you know, said, yeah, we got to have, you know, Christopher Williams, we got to have an Albie show, we got to have a so you know, and it's, it just, it just, took off, took a life of its own. And uh, I guess I was very grateful to be a part of, you know, being the first platinum artist and the first number one artist on the label, um, which was even more of a blessing. And then, you know, and, you know, winning, you know, best new artist, Soul Train Award, best new artist, American Music Award, nominated for, you know, four Grammys, one Grammy with L, you know, so, so that part of the journey, it's just like, I, I never really considered the accolades portion of it. I was just more about, especially myself, Eddie and Kyle, you know, we we're about putting the work in. Um, you know, it, it would have been, I think it would have been even crazier if we had this thing called Twitter and Face Space and my book and all this other stuff. <laughs> but, 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 you know, the young people, listen, that's why I said I like to see the young people. You know, I, I don't hate on anybody's craft, but these young people got it easy. I mean, you know, they, they hit one button and they reach a million people. We had to yeah. get a poster, get the poster made up, run down the street, make sure the coastal square and then staple it to the to the wall so you know the people driving down the street would see you know it's crazy yeah, but um you yeah, know but it, it, it was all worth it because it created a work ethic like none other and um you know we we kind of we made it up as we went along but we were methodical i call it full speed ahead methodically oh yeah no no the grind the ground was definitely real and uh while we were doing some you know i wanted to go back and and relook at some of those old videos and so i looked at night and day so i I want to get your opinion on on because I'm looking at the video. I'm like, man, this video is a lot different back then. <laughs> so, how would you critique uh, yourself on night and day, uh, looking back at it right now? Um, I, I believe the director was um, Peter Nigel. I believe the director was Peter Nigel um, on this particular. Oh, was it Peter? Um, but I mean, it was just. First of all, it was a scary undertaking. Um, going around new york city imagine going around new york city and uh you know filming in different locations and you know from the, the roof of the gramercy hotel um you know uh, by the river you know all over you know the streets um and having all the different fashion changes it was exciting i mean just um and then you know being responsible for you know the, the the gene phase of with the with the holes in the genes and so on and so forth and at that time i really wish that I, I wish that i was smart enough as a 17 or 18 year old to to have an endorse a gene endorsement deal because i know i made edwin jeans you know you know how like when cardi cardi wins wore the red bottom shoes and their, their stock went yeah. up i know because it was from traveling after i would travel all over the world on tour i would see um, you know, the, the music lovers, I don't call them fans, I call them music lovers, the, you know, the music enthusiasts who would come to the concerts, you know, we'd sell out, you know, stadiums four nights in a row, you know, I'll be sure new edition, Bobby Brown, and you see droves of, of people, women and men, in these acid wash jean suits <laughs> with yes. the shiny shoes on and so forth. And, you know, it was just, it was fascinating. I mean, you know, obviously Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers between Warner Brothers and Uptown, um, they just did a fantastic job in terms of the marketing and getting me out there. And, you know, and I was a workhorse, so, you know, I, I, I would be on tour and, you know, and that, that's, a, that's a pretty hard thing. It's even funny, you know, remembering Michael saying that he hated the tour. 
but once you get on stage, it's a, it's a you go into a whole it's a metamorphosis, and you go into a whole other you know situation. But it's it's a lot of preparation. People see the outcome, and they see you know Beyonce on the stage and all the lights and all the stuff like that, but they don't realize that woman is in that rehearsal you know every day, hours and hours and hours. It's almost like we can associate it with how you know, and God rest his soul as well, how Kobe Bryant um, with the Mamba mentality. Um, because this business is not built for everybody, but that Mamba mentality where he would be at practice before practice, he would be at practice, and then he'd be at practice after practice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and so they say practice make perfect, and he was, you know, he was just a phenomenal, uh, you know, he had a phenomenal work ethic. And um, you really have to have that in this business, um, because then you got to deal with all the other bureaucracy and all the craziness that goes on, and, you know, the, the rock star life. And, you know, it's 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 a it's an interesting journey. It it really is because you know, and then artists go through ups and downs because uh, the style of music may fade out and a new style may come in, and then you know, and then the labels switch up, and then they get new people in the labels. Then you don't have you know, it's it, it's a it's just it's it's quite a journey. But you know, it's one that you know if you stay focused, you know, I'm I'm just so grateful that I, I, the joke in my in my camp is. They call me. He says, "Man, you're like an old black Justin Bieber." He says, "Yo, the phone is still ringing all around the globe for you." <laughs> but he says, "He says, and they're just excited to see you." They, they said, and I'm like, "Wow!" I said, "It's really, it's really humbling to, to in, in terms of the phone is still ringing around the globe, you know." And I, I don't want to ruin the whole sexy thing. You know, I, I don't know where it came from, but I'm I'm a bit of a geek and I'm kind of a nerd, so I'm into Google Analytics and data analytics and studying digital footprints and. <laughs> So, you know, I, you know, you know, I, but, but that's, you know, but I'm saying that to say um, that I look at the analytics relates to the music and, you know, whether it's R&B, New Jack Swing, because I've kind of dabbled into everything from rock and roll to you know, pop to hip hop, um, but everything derived from hip hop, you know, in Mount Vernon, that's kind of where the, that's the base of everything. And um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's been quite a journey, but I'm, I'm grateful that we have these tools now because now I can understand. I know what cities. I know the, what's called the in marketing. What the sweet spot is. It relates to you know the age range and how to market to them. So I stay. I stay pretty much engaged. I'm probably one of the most engaged artists, you know, from my era in terms of social media and things of that nature. Um, and studying that and, and 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 seeing the algorithms related to you know where the music is hot and and where the where my digital footprint is most prevalent. You know what cities and what age range, and, you know, um, and it's, it's it's amazing just to have those tools, and, and then you follow up with them, and you continue to work. So it's just a blessing to uh, to to really kind of understand that and and follow through with that. And uh, and I'm just grateful, you know. Just I, I just did a Detroit this weekend, and um, sold out by the waterfront. Um, it was just amazing, and, and the people in Detroit. It was just, I mean. <laughs> What they don't understand is because I, I, I traditionally wear sunglasses, you know, you know, put on the whole of my character and you know, got the hat on and, the, and, the, and, 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 and it's, it's, but they don't realize like the first part of the show, when I walk out and I see it, the, the, the venue full to the top, I'm in tears half the time, like just in grateful tears, like man, people came out they, 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 30, 30 something years later and people are still coming out. And I'm so humbly grateful for that, you know. And that's why I tell everybody my saying before I get off stage and say, listen, thank you for keeping it grown at newjacksexy.com. Okay. I tell you, Al, you can talk nerdy to me any time. <laughs> Bring on the nerdy. That's awesome. No, I think you're the first. Well, we did have an analytics guy on about a year ago. But other than that, you were the only person to ever come on and talk about analytics and sound so good doing it kudos to you <laughs> we, we can talk about we can talk about the analytics you know the digital footprint in addition to uh, cryptocurrency um you know any and you know i was gonna say 
obviously, you know, my, all of my social media is pretty consistent. It's official LB show on my social media. So, so if anybody is ever interested in knowing, we have an amazing platform that's doing quite, quite well related to digital currency. Because people, people don't realize. See, here we go. I'm going into my nerd again. Um, you know, like Eddie, Eddie, is, Eddie is the real genius behind it because he's, you know, he's mining Ethereum, and I mean, just, just, just quite fascinating and. Uh, our group is very, very successful. There's, you know, you got to be careful because there's a lot of, uh, you know, scammers out there and cyber, you know, all type of stuff like that. But if you get into the right situation, it's a very lucrative uh, new technology in addition to what people need to understand also with, uh, with cryptocurrency. I think some, don't quote me on the exact number, but like maybe 10 years ago, like a few decades ago, a hundred dollars on it. Bitcoin, I think you'd be somewhere around five million right now if you said on the wallet. Um, so, so it's it's the, the, wow. the returns on this, the, the currency is, is quite fascinating. In addition to, um, if anybody's ever interested, just DM me on Instagram and say, "Hey, Al, hey I'm interested in cryptocurrency." <laughs> slide you, into those do DMs. <laughs> yeah, to slide into my DM and I say, "Hey, Al, <laughs> I want to know about the cryptocurrency." And we'll send you a, a Zoom link that we do every day. We educate ourselves every day, and uh, it's just quite an amazing. Wow. Thing. And I tell you like this, because people go, "What is it? Monopoly money? What is it? so and so?" And I'm like, "No, no, it's not any, nothing like Monopoly, but it's like the hotel business." In addition to, um, you know, it's not going away. Number one, Wall Street, um, in in concert, has infused over a trillion dollars in cryptocurrency. Number one, number two, um, major corporations as in Visa. PayPal, uh, Venmo, Cash App, all have included cryptocurrency in their, in their business model. Um, and it's it's just, it's, it's quite fascinating. So, you know, besides the touring and the music and so on and so forth, I, you know, I've been fully immersed into the, into the cryptocurrency, you know, and of course, again, it's a DJ at EF uh, uh, led uh, journey and uh, man, it, it's been amazing. Chief, it's not too late for us. Slide into his DMs after the show and, and hey, let's yeah. let hey, yeah. do it. I'll send you the Zoom link. <laughs> I'll send you guys a Zoom link and we have one every day. Usually it's like seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And then uh, and, and, and it's just really, really interesting. And there's people from all over the globe. Like we have we have members wow. from Dubai and Germany and like all over. And it's just really, really interesting. In addition to you'll you'll see a lot of familiar faces as well. You know, a few personalities and celebrity types and athletes and so on and so forth are, are involved and everybody's just having fun in fact my grandson my, my my grandson who will be eight this year he has his own wallet and i think he may even made you know like 1500 bucks in like in, in like two or three weeks you know like and he's, he's he was seven you know so so it's, it's really, it's, <laughs> wow wow man, man. oh man <laughs> and i'm glad you said that because I'm impressed. I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a brand new grandfather, right? And so I Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So my grandson was born on July 27th and I uh, I'm trying to figure out what to call me because the granddaddy seems a little bit too old, way too old. <laughs> I'm not so happening. I'm not what, happening. What, what, kind, what, what kind of cool granddad? What kind of cool grand name do you have for yourself or your your grandson calls you? He calls me Pop Pops. Pop -pops. So P O P P O P Z pop pops. Yeah, you can't call me Grant. I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> but, but, but let me tell. You, but, but let me tell you about. No, let me tell you something. So now I, I I truly understand my mother's relationship with with my guys because now like nope, you can't tell me anything that relates to to my grandson. Like I used to like if, let's say one of my sons would come, you know, like my older son, he would say, hey, "Yo, pops, let me, you know, let me have some." And then I'm like, no, so you know, then he goes to my mother, and my mother's like, "Here, yeah, here's the whole thing." Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Like, so, like, and they and they would both be looking at me, and my, and my son looking like, mm, "See, you know." So it, it's just it's fun because it's like that kid can do no wrong, you know. He can do no wrong. I just got he had he had his first day of school yesterday, so I was so proud. Oh, and, oh. And he sent me all the pictures. And What's stuff, his and, name? You know, Grandmaster Chase. That's what we call him, Chase. <laughs> Chase. <laughs> awesome, awesome, Chase. We hope you have a great year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's got he's got four drones. He's got you know, he's he's growing out of the school. We got to give him new school clothes. Everything. It's just he. Oh, and what an amazing kid and, and, and such a smart young man. 
Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Not That's awesome. <laughs> So the last 18 months, Al, they've been really hard, especially for those in the music industry. So without touring um, during the pandemic, how did you stay connected with those who love your music? Um, well, uh, you know, as I mentioned, um, I'm heavily immersed into, uh, you know, social media. So I make sure to, I've been doing something called morning prayer and meditation and random sharing random thoughts. So I go on live um, every morning and I take people on a ride with me. So I go into this place called Botanical Gardens and I, I, have, a, uh, I have a mountain bike and I have a, uh, an entire harness you know, set where I go live on Instagram or, or YouTube or what have you every morning. And I take people on a 20 or 30 mile ride and we just talk about anything and everything under the sun. you know. Um, and there are people on from all over the world. And then what I also let them do is come on and uh, you know, I kind of update them on some of the things that are going on, but I also, uh, you know, let them, you know, congregate with each other and, and promote their businesses. If they got clothing lines or they've got this or they got, you know, makeup, whatever they do, you know, I, I'm not like the other artists where, you know, everybody's like, now nah, you can't promote your stuff here. I'm like, no, listen, y'all have at it. That's what social media is for. So, um, and I've gotten to know, you know, people digitally as it relates to, you know, and, and they, they always, you know, it's just a really, really positive group of people. We get a few thousand people on every morning and wow, it's just, it's, is we stay in touch and it's a great it's a great uh it's a great mechanism you know obviously social media you know is, is it, it's it covers both sides of the spectrum related to uh uh you know it could be the biggest curse but the biggest blessing at the same time you know because you know you accept, and and like i said you know, i guess my camp is right when they call me old black justin b because i i still got stalkers at 53 like in the if you see some of the stuff in, like there's, there's there's one there's one or two that are just so out of control and they do the craziest stuff and i've never like there's one of them i've never even met i don't know because you know what that they do uh there, there are a group of people who create these fake profiles and they start inboxing some people so right so if you're not so if you're not social media savvy you should get off of social media because there have been situations where where they inbox, you know, saying they me, they copy all of my photos and the inbox saying it's me. And then they start creating a relationship with some of these people. So let's say, let's say out of 10 people, they fool mm -hmm. four or five people. And then they start sending them money and so they start doing this crazy, it's nuts. And they fly places. Oh, come spend time with me in the studio and come to, it's really, you know, and, and then they, and what's really silly. And this is what I tell people to, to be really diligent about it because they do this without even seeing the person or speak or really, you know, hearing their voice or whatever. It's just they texting each other back and forth. And I'm like, please be smarter than that and stop believing it's really me. I mean, people know who, who it's me. I have the check mark. <laughs> and um, I was about to say it. that. Make sure you're looking for the check mark, folks. Yeah, and yeah, it's and official, and official, official well. Al B. Sure. Right. Official <laughs> O F F I C I L A L B S or official show on Twitter. Instagram, Facebook, you know, Face Space, my book, MySpace, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but it's a, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's you know, it, but it's, but also too, I mean, and, but on a serious note, the danger in that also is that you have these, what, what you call cyber, cyber, cyber criminals that um, mm -hmm. will lure people, places and so on and so forth. And in addition to, and then you don't hear about it until it's on the ID channel or something of that nature, you know, and that's really sad. So I, I really would hope that some of these social media portals would, would do a better job of policing because um, obviously they know where to find them if people are making up fake profiles and people are reporting them because i get a bunch of dms a hundred a week saying yo there's another there's another fake one um talking to me in my inbox uh oh and, and they don't know that we actually know each other so i said well just play it off just, just, you know it's <laughs> Well, we're going to take a bike ride with uh, with Al uh, one morning on the meditation. Yeah, and I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's fun. Now, now I'm, y'all should yeah. I'm you, make sure you log on. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm imagining you like as a Peloton instructor, and, and you you on this like, journey, <laughs> and we're on the Peloton trying to try to mm -hmm. keep up with you. So, but yeah, that, that's just no. But let me tell you. So there's a part of the park that I go through that every morning, early in the morning, there's an instructor out there and he has like maybe 20 or 30 clients and they're doing yoga and they're doing so and so forth. So as I'm riding, I always stop there. So the people are hearing the guy go one, two, like, like he's doing like Michael Blanks or Billy Blanks, you know, doing Tybo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. 
my gosh. <laughs> that sounds so awesome. <laughs> So Al, uh, you've shared a whole lot about your um, your music career, but can you uh, can you tell us a little bit about mentors? Let's talk about mentors. Um, who has influenced you and how? Oh wow. Um, well, obviously, you know, I have to say, you know, my mom and my dad. You know, um, you know, uh, obviously, you know, the Quincy Jones of the world. Um, you know, uh, DJ Eddie F. You know, mentors. Um, you know, just different people that I've met, you know, over the years who have inspired me, who've been very positive force. Um, and, you know, I always hold them to the highest esteem um, and appreciate it because, you know, this is a this is a very steep, steep mountain to climb um, and very specifically to still be here. So, you know, thank you to all of them. You know. Absolutely. So, uh, Al, you got a very, very captive audience today. Uh, you got soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, guardians, uh, Coast Guard members, and military families watching from all over First the of world. All, thank you, thank you, thank you to thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you around the world protecting us. You know, I mean, from from the bottom of my heart, thank you. We appreciate you. We praise you. Um, please be safe. Um, you know, just just please be safe out there and uh, and make it home. Awesome, man. You well, you took my question, man. I, I, you like you got some ESP <laughs> going on, like you like you must got a script or something over there. <laughs> <laughs> and Al, you've collaborated with some incredible artists: Diana Ross, David Bowie, Al Green. Is there anyone in particular that really stands out to you as far as collaboration goes? And then, who would you most like to work with in the future? Oh wow. Um... Yeah, I've had the blessing of, of, you know, we used to have a, I don't want to call it boot camp per se, but, you know, when we first started, you know, obviously myself and Eddie F and Kyle West and, you know, Teddy Riley, and then, and then everybody kind of had their own camps and, you know, having an opportunity to work with, you know, Faith Evans and, and Dave Hollister and Case and Anthony Hamilton and, you know, Stevie J and, um, you know, just so many different and and amazing and talented uh, individuals. Yeah, no, right. Like, just, it's just, just named on my this, whole playlist. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it, you know, it's like it's like the soundtrack to our generation. Um, it was just truly, truly amazing. Um, uh, you know, obviously the Andre Harrells of the world. You know, rest his soul. Um, you know, Russell Simmons. You know, there's so many, there's so many that who are, who are super influencers, and, and obviously, um, you know. Babyface, who's somebody you know, I, I truly admire um, his artistic and his, his, his art and his pen. His pen game is, is, is lethal. Um, you know, there, there's so many you know talented, really really talented um, musicians, and I think probably my biggest influence, to be honest with you, was a gentleman by the name of Johnny Mathis. So besides oh, wow. Michael Jackson, it's really Johnny Mathis because that was probably my mother's favorite. You know, growing up as a child, so I, you know, I listened to all, all of that stuff, and he is the epitome of what like romance and, and things of that nature. I mean, he can make a Christmas record sound romantic, you know. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, again, well, I, Julie I love and I, I love Julie and I love Christmas music too. Uh huh. Well, I, well, I just, uh, I think I posted it on my thing. I just, I redid Nat King Cole's uh, Christmas song. Um, and actually, I'll send you a copy of it. And, uh, but I was—I just did it as a demo, just, and I because because everybody's been saying, "Hey, when are you going to do a Christmas record?" And I, and I keep going, "Yeah, I'll do it next year." So, so, I, so I'm, each year I'm just working on a different song. So maybe in the next two or three years, I'll I'll drop a Christmas uh, Christmas uh, nice. EP. <laughs> Man, but uh, but but to, to answer answer your question, I, um, I'd love to work with with Sting. Um, oh wow. You know, Chick Corea, uh, you know, Mousy, uh, you know, Greg Filling Gaines, you know, just like the, 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 um, Eric Roberson. Like, there's so many, you know, Jill Scott, you know, I mean, there's, there's so many, you know, talented, I don't want to leave anybody out, but just, <laughs> you know, you know I, I'm really, I, honestly, I'm, I'm open to, you know, I, I was just, I was just fortunate to, you know, like I said, be in workhorse mode and, you know, very specifically when I first started producing, probably my first, Kyle and I, our first job was, I think it was Rod Stewart. 
and then we worked you know with Robert Palmer and 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 uh, Shanice Wilson too. She's another oh, she's a powerhouse. Yeah, that is. Um, uh, just you know, there, there's some one twelve. You know, we did Usher, we did Usher's first album, uh, his launch album with you know, with, with Puff. Um, just you know, it, I just I, I just enjoy collaborating with other creative minds, and um, you know that's why I look forward to now. As you see right here, what this represents is the dog pound. So you know, oh, working okay. with corrupt and dad. And yeah, I'm like kind of the R&B arm to things. We're putting some stuff together and we have some really creative stuff coming coming forth. Um, the Four Horsemen, uh, uh, Roz Cos and all, you know, Dillinger, you know, just, uh, man, it's, it's gonna, you know, I, I'm just excited about just the, cre the creative aspect of it. Um, and obviously always Kyle West, Eddie F, you know, um, you know, it's such iconic producers and musicians and so on and so forth. Um, uh, you know, like I said, I'm just, I'm open to, you know, anyone who's creative and, and who just has doesn't have a, a limit to their creativity. I mean, I'm 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 super excited to work with, you know. Awesome. Good and stuff. And obviously, Good the, stuff. probably one of the, the probably one of the more exciting times, you know, uh, to be honest with you, is you know, obviously working with Quincy Jones and, and sitting at, mm -hmm. at, a, at a board with Quincy Jones and. and Bruce Bruce Houdin on one side and Quincy Jones over here and Michael Jackson somewhere you know it's like yeah. I have to pinch myself sometimes and I'm like wow I mean just truly amazing and, and very humbling so excellent so between music nerd zoom with Al bike rides with Al if you haven't gotten enough of Al he's also hosting a nationally syndicated radio show called Love and R&B. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about that? And then what was the transition like from performing on stage to hosting radio? Um, well, there was really no transition. I've actually been doing radio since I was maybe 15 years old. Um, oh, wow. And un unbeknownst to me, what happened was, so I went to a church in New Rochelle, New York, uh, which is right next to Mount Vernon, where I grew up called the Bible Way Church and our pastor was Bishop uh, Odell Lyerly and um, he was just always very encouraging about you know helping young people and I was too shy to sing in the choir and he was like well, you're <laughs> going to do something we're going, to, we're going to make you we're going to make you do something so he actually taught me construction and we wound up building a a, uh, a recording booth uh, next to the pulpit of the church um, where I had a four track and so on and so forth. So my job was to record the sermon and the choir, mix it down, and then bring it, do the voiceover on it. My voice wasn't this deep back then. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> and you know, it's like, it's more like, oh, like oh. um, <laughs> but, right, but, but my, you know, then I had to bring it to the AM station. So I, so from what I remember, it was, um, WVOX 1460 on your AM dial, where it's Bishop Oldell, Bishop Oldell Liley uh, presides at the Bible Way Church in downtown Nourishville. So, so I remember that, at least that part of it, but I don't remember the other thing. But, but, it was, it was, but that, was, that was my introduction. <laughs> but that was my introduction to, to radio back then. And, then. and then, you know, I was at, you know, I was with uh, Clear Channel and I was with ABCRN, ABC Radio Networks and Disney and, you know, Citadel, you know, just over the years. So I, it's, it's been close to, I guess, 25 years. I, I really have to lose in count. So I think that's a good thing. But um, but it's been such a blessing. The vehicle of radio is fantastic. And it's, 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 it's very fascinating. Um, so my current show uh, called Love and R&B, we are in, I think, 25 to 30 markets. Um, it's what we call... Uh, the most romantic place on earth. Um, I have an incredible <laughs> team. Okay. We we call it. Uh, Miss Kathy Hughes calls it uh, calls us her dream team. You know, you have you have um, uh, Ricky Smiley who does the morning show. He actually took over for the legendary Tom Joyner when he was Tom Joyner. Yep. Uh, and then you have um, you have Russ Parr, who's an amazing you know uh, uh, great radio person as well. And you have Deal Hughley who does the afternoons. You know, and then certain markets, and you got you got. Donnie Simpson, okay, Donnie Simpson. Yeah. So, so I get to work with all these legends, and uh, and 
you got Dale Higley who does the mid drive and then I do the night show. And um, so it's now I'm, I'm had it's like hashtag the voice, the voice of nighttime radio. It's um, <clears throat> uh, let, let me see if I can remember how it goes. Wherever you find yourself this evening, call up all of your friends. Tell them that love and R&B is on and to keep it locked all night long. But you know, this might like how it's all day. Love and R&B playing the entire soundtrack to our generation. But wait, there's a catch. Listen only if you're grown and sexy. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's so that's about. Okay. <laughs> I know what I'm doing tonight. It's uh, the- <laughs> we're on here in Dallas on Magic 94.5. Yeah, I'll be there at seven. See you there or listen to you there. That's wow. Okay. Uh, you, uh, you have, what, market, what, what market is everyone in? So, so Dallas, where, where Dallas. <laughs> Okay, so you're on Magic 94.5, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Magic. Yes. Magic. Uh, yes. You're going to have to get your uh, uh, attorney on retainer because you're going to have a lot of child support, child support claims because, because of your shit. <laughs> oh, no. Let, let, let me tell you, let me, I have to tell you the, the funny part about this. Uh, the two things when I'm on tour, the two things uh, that I always get approached with is, um, so sometimes, you know, when we do meet and greets with the radio station, if I'm on tour somewhere, somebody will bring me, um, in every city, somebody will bring me a phone bill. Because I used to, I had the top three, it was like myself, new kids on the block, and I think Run DMC, we had the top three earning 900 numbers. So the kids would run home after school, <laughs> call up to win a date, you know, with new kids on the block, or Albie Show, or Run DMC, or whatever, whatever the promotion is back then. And so, so uh, I always get, you know, random people coming up saying, hey, you know what? He says, man, I'm mad at you. I said, well, why? He says, man, I got my butt whipped because of you because I, I got my phone shut off because I didn't call that 900 number so many times. And then my grandmama beat my butt. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so, so but, but between that and, uh, you know, it, it's, just, it's just fun. It's just amazing. And then I think, you know what? The, and this is something I talk about. Um, this is, first of all, again, thank you for having me on today because this is something I talk about um, very related to our soldiers all around the globe and how I think one of the more fascinating things for me is being anywhere, whether I'm in an airport, on the street, in the grocery store and stuff, you know, because I stop and talk to everybody. Um, and I love people and, you know, everywhere I go, everybody wants to take pictures and this. And I'm like, you know, you're too young. But but very specifically when the soldiers and when I meet someone from, from any of the armed forces and I remember one of the most fascinating stories because a while back I was on, when I was at ABC, I was on a, a format called The Touch and basically we were in 170 countries on, on the armed forces network as well. So it was kind of the night show and it was called Secret Garden back then. And I would get letters and emails and stuff and saying, yeah, man, when we were in, it was a desert, I think it was desert. When we were in the desert, um, man, we had our Walkmans. This is, I'm really dating myself now. Is it, we had storm. our Walkman. We would rock, <laughs> we would rock your tape and, and New Edition and Bobby Brown and Keith Sweat and said, Tony, Tony, Tony. And then he said, man, you, you took our minds off of the circumstances and the situation surrounding us, you know. And that's probably, that's bigger than the Grammy. That's bigger than a Grammy for me. That's bigger than any accolade or award to hear one of our soldiers come and say, hey man, you know, we were rocking with you while we were out there defending you. And we thank you, you know, to, to keep keep us, you know, it's like, I, I, there's no way to describe it, to be honest with you, but it's, that's probably the highlight of my career. It's just hearing from the soldiers say, saying that they really enjoyed the art that I was bringing forth and how it, you know, it, it allowed them to kind of acquiesce and kind of step step away from you know, the current situation, I think, like in Desert Storm. And then even, you know, in, in, in the soldiers now, just reaching out, you know, from everywhere. Because um, I, also, I think I host, every year, I, I traditionally with uh, Sergeant Major Michelle S. Jones. Um, she does the Miss and Mrs. Veterans, uh, you know, uh, uh, pageant. And it's, it's really, really nice and, you know, honoring uh, the veterans. And, and 
and when I go, I get to hear these stories, and it's the most fascinating and amazing time to have just to listen to how, um, you know, one of my one of my titles, you know, either got someone through a, a rough time, or it could have been a childbirth, or it could have been a divorce, or it could have been you know finals in school, or you know just it, the, the songs are now cemented within the DNA of the population. And I'm forever grateful that people have allowed my art to be a part of their journey in any way, shape or form. So if, if artists don't tell you that, then they're, they're, they're foolish. And I, I truly appreciate my art being a part of anyone's journey and bringing them through stuff. Cause I even, you know, when they slide up in the DM, I get, I get these, these messages from people saying like from the fellas, from the ladies, I mean, it's a, it's a whole, it's a mixture. Like, Yo B, Yo, man, I'm telling you, yo, I was going through this, man, and it, ooh, this love is so, I was listening to your version of Killing Me Softly. Yeah, I was listening to Naturally Mine. Oh, and, you know, that night and day got me through this. I was taking, you know, uh, my wife and I, that was my wedding song, yo, Secret Garden, you know. So it's just a blessing to have those hit titles and, and it be a part of, you know, people's journey, man. It, it's, it's, it's feeling like no other. Yeah, man, so, no, and just kind of, like I said before uh, we started the interview, like you, you impacted so many people, including me in my household. So uh, just thank you for what, what you've done and, and sharing your art with the world. Uh, but we're, we're going to switch gears into a more serious topic. Um, you were super, you were very public about your health scare and your in incredible weight loss. Uh, and so you lost a hundred pounds in a year. Is what what I what I saw? Uh, can you no, well, over the past th over the past three years, it's probably one hundred and twenty five pounds or so. And it's just really just been about health and wellness for me at this point. But in the interim, I wound up having some gallbladder issues and so on and so forth. And, uh, and that was pretty, pretty, a pretty treacherous time, you know, getting news that, you know, I may not have much longer if I didn't get it taken care of. And, and it's like, it's a scary notion. So I really been focused on it. But, but the, the starter, kind of the, the, the last motivating factor in, in losing the weight was which is funny because I, I just saw the I just saw the clip online when I was on TMZ and I was talking about how my grandson and in August we you know at the Vegas house we do a you know nice party with him and we uh, you know just we just have so much fun and 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 uh, I remember him coming up to me and right before he has to leave because traditionally you know we go back to L.A. and you know because and you know because he has school coming up or what have you and. He walks up to me and says, uh, hey, Pop Pops. And I said, I said, yes, Chase. He says, uh, I'm a big boy. And I said, of course you are. He says, no, I'm a, I have an idea. And I'm like, OK, this is a five year old. Okay, <laughs> I have an idea. He says, um, he said, I'm not going to be sad this time. Because what happens is a half an hour. It's like tradition. Half an hour before after leave, we get a little sad. We're kind of like, because that's my dude. So we're like, all right. So he says, Aww. he says, Pop Pops, um, he says, what do you think? And he said, he comes over to me and he taps me on the stomach and he goes, Pop Pops, I have an idea. You can play Santa Claus at my next birthday party. <laughs> I was like, yeah. wow, no, but, 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 but look, there's a message within, you know, so, 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 but it was, that was kind of the last motivating factor. And then I decided to go and, and, you know, start changing my diet and, and you know, I cut out all bread, rice, pasta, anything that turned to sugar, because people don't realize sugar is probably the most le legal, lethal drug known to man. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's crack. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really it's something uh, that your body just, it's like, it will start to crave. So I started that way. Um, and then I started it, like the, doing the 21 day thing. And I started to look at my, you know, my appearance again. I was like, wait a minute, that wasn't me, you know, 21 days ago. So it kind of motivated me to keep going and kind of wean my body off the sugar and so on and so forth. Then um, once I, you know, and I, and I tried every, every, you know, uh, first of all, I don't even know how I got there in the first place, but I got my, at the height of it, I was at 309 pounds. Um, and I was considered a medically obese by, by the, my physician. So I qualified um, to do surgery, to do what's called bariatric surgery. And what, my, what I wound up doing is, uh, you know, you have to show something related to, you know, that you've tried to lose weight, you know, because I did HGC, LMNOP, QRST, I did all types of stuff trying, <laughs> yeah. you know, trying to, you know, get the weight off and, you know, some of it worked sometimes and then it wasn't consistent, you know, so 
you really you really have to just decide to do it for yourself i mean that's kind of the most important thing you really have to do it for yourself you can't do it for your loved one your wife your husband your girlfriend your uncle your cousin you, you have to do it for you, um, you and it's again it's being in charge of your star play oh first of all i got a big, big shout out to Devin loud quincy little loud i love y'all um chasey i love you shanny happy birthday I had to make sure that i said that <laughs> but no, but they're, you know, they're, they're the inspiration. They're the inspiration. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm grateful. And, and then, you know, I, I've been having conversations with some of the uh, uh, medical professionals and, you know, talking about doing, you know, some health initiatives and so on and so forth and, um, you know, re related to weight loss and getting healthy and so on and so forth. Because the struggle is real. I mean, I love sugar. I love M&Ms. I love, you know, and, I, and, and it was horrible because my show when my show was in, in you know here in las vegas the the listeners would send me cases of m m's because they knew because i would go live on facebook or go live on whatever during the show and you know i always have a bag of m m's and then it slowly turned from m m's to to oranges and apples and fruit and stuff like that but i would get bags and, and boxes of shipments of, of m m's and things of that nature so thank you um but no thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. My vice, my vice is gummy bears. So I, I mean, I just did a post on my my social media about being a gummy bear fiend. Matter of fact, I'm on I'm on the news in San Angelo, Texas, uh, talking about uh, my first buy on the new uh, store that we just opened up uh, was gonna be gummy bears. So uh, I got so for all the people that are listening, don't send me gummy bears. Send me apples and oranges uh, because I, <laughs> I need to make sure <laughs> I need to make sure. Yeah, but that, yeah, those are just. Those oranges have a lot of sugar in them too, too. Even though the natural fruits and stuff. So, but um, yeah, yeah, no, it's you know, it's it's you know, it's called, it's a journey. But but again, what happened was you know, a lot of times there, there can be a result in terms of uh, you know, issue with the gallbladder and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you know, we had a few, few complications in terms of you know, when I went to go see the doctor, we found out that uh, I had three abdominal abscesses and so on and so forth. So two upper and one lower pelvic mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So it was just it was just quite a journey like to go through all that stuff like that. But again, it's a wake up call um, to say, hey, you know, what? let's try to get healthy and let's try to stick to it. You know, as difficult as it is, especially with, with you know a lot of the traveling, even though the traveling is kind of shut down just, you know, mm -hmm. to half the travel because I was on, you know, again, just being grateful because I was booked to 2023. You know, in different places all over, and and having to, you know, we, we even had a love and R&B tour that was going to was set to launch as well to do like 30 cities and do what's called an evergreen property where we rotate the artists. You know, whether it's like let's say it's in Vogue and Faith Evans and SWV, and then you know uh, Tyrese Eldebarge, and you know, so um, but we had to shut it down. In addition to there was a uh, the the cruise as well. Um, you know, for Ricky Smiley and, you know, a lot of stuff stopped because of this COVID. So I really want, you know, I really want people to take this seriously in terms of, um, uh, you know, because obviously when you have something this massive globally, it becomes financial and politics that get in the way of making the right decisions. And, um, you know, and then it becomes very confusing because obviously we have what's called the internet and you get all type of, you know, different information and then you got the, the cdc telling you to wear a mask don't wear a mask you know stand on your head you know drink bleach you know it's just it, it's it, you get so much confusion you know confusing information so my suggestion to everyone and i'm not a qualified physician so but my suggestion is to just be diligent um you know stay masked up and you know i'll, I'll take the time to do a shameless plug i have plenty of masks at newjacksexy.com and there's some stuff, some fun sayings, you know. Um, yeah, so newjacksexy.com. Put your order in right now. It's a bunch of fun stuff there. But and, and what that is is funny because it's not what it sounds like. New Jack Sexy basically. <laughs> see, I know you're gonna laugh. New Jack Sexy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, New, New Jack blushing. Sexy is, is a is a movement. New Jack Sexy is is a movement of of the power of positivity. And basically, what that is is every morning. We, this is how we start the, the the morning the live on instagram as well so every morning that you're blessed enough to wake up and breathe god's good air um look into your mirror first look into your own mirror i don't care if you're brushing your teeth you got stuff falling out of your mouth whatever look into your mirror and tell yourself i am 
new Jack Sexy. Now that can mean anything. That can mean I am going to get this new job. I am going to beat cancer. I am going to, you know, get a new car. Like whatever is associated with your particular situation um, is, is, you know, and you don't wait. It's called self self affirmation. You don't wait for your spouse, your kids, your sons, you know, to tell you how amazing you are. Yep, it starts with you. Um, so you have to tell yourself how truly amazing you are, and I think your day goes much better. In addition to making sure that anyone that you encounter throughout the day, you leave them in a better place than you found them. Um, and it's not about money. It's just it could be an encouraging word. It could just be being, being, being positive or being kind to someone. Um, because people are going through a lot right. They really are. People are going through a lot. Mm -hmm. Hey, Leah, do you know what? Yes. Leah, what? let's try it. I am New Jack Sexy. Do you do I it? am New Jack Sexy. There you go. Chief. Come on, Chief. You too. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely New Jack Sexy. I'm, I'm the all the way New Jack Sexy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so anybody, anybody who... Uh, just go check it out. It's it's a it's a fun place. It is just you know we have a bunch of merchandise and and like and for the ladies we have the leggings and you know so when you go do your workout it has New Jack sexy on the side. It's got a bunch of cool stuff on this. Oh, we have and, to get and that. And then you know co coffee mugs. You got coffee mugs. And and what happens is it's just something that to remind yourself everywhere you, you know, everywhere you go, even if it's on your coffee mug, saying I am New Jack sexy. You know just to keep that positivity flowing, especially with all the negativity that's going on in society right. So I just try to do a very small part, you know, with, with people that rock with me on social media to, to make sure that we stay engaged and, and, uh, and just keep that positivity flowing. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> yes. Well, this is fantastic. No wonder people just love you so much. Um, I want to just pause and share some of the comments and the feedback that we're getting on our live feed. So Keela says, awesome. Great birthday present for me. 50 years old today. Army strong. Happy birthday, Keela. Happy birthday. And Mark Jenkins, I think he's he's a chief chat oh, yeah. regular, but that's my, that's my twin. Mark, chief Max <laughs> uh, Mark Jenkins. Well now hey, he's chief, saying I, uh, Chief, I thought I thought I was your twin. No, no, and this, I think, Chief Chief just traded me I, in that quickly. See that? Though? No, but listen, I, if, if, if I, if I, I think, think Mark thinks he's both of our twins. Yes. Right, yeah. He says we, we something like twins. They used to call me jinx. Ain't sure. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, that's funny. Um, we have people tuning in from all over. Um, Jose says hi from Chicago, uh, Patrick from Cleveland. Um, WZAK what? in Cleveland. That's we're on every night on WZA in Chicago. We're on 106.3. Chicago's finest. Yeah. Vicky says hello from Japan. Um, so, Vicky, arigato. Oh. Arigato, arigato, Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Man. And then Army. Army family and MWR programs, they're, they're a great um, partner with us. They say, Al, who is your favorite current R&B artist? I think that's going to be. I'll be sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Um, you know that's that's a that's a really really good question. Um, uh, yeah, that's that's a hard one um, because I everybody kind of has a different purpose. You know, different artists have different styles and different purposes. Um, um, man. I'll get back to you on that. In fact, what I'll do is I'll post that on my I'll, I'll post that on my social media at some point, or maybe I'll come back to the, the feed. And, are we live on Facebook as well? Yeah, we are. We are. We yes. Are. Okay. Yep. So you're gonna send me the, you'll send me the link, and then I'll make sure I type it in the link. And if anybody wants to ask any questions, I'll go back and check it when I get an opportunity. Maybe while I'm on air or something, and I'll I'll go and answer a few of the questions. And stuff. So, uh, that might be a oh, trap. You know, uh, that might be a trap. <laughs> That's like. Pick your favorite child, like it's right. You know, no, but see, now, see now, <laughs> now, that that would have been my answer if if somebody would have said, "Well, what's the favorite song you've ever done?" I said, "That's like saying which is your favorite child, so you can't." There's no, yeah, yeah. It's like every, everyone has a different, you know, different flow in the room. We also have uh, Denise. She says, "Hey, family," and Marla saying, "Hi." Chris Ward says, "These stories are great. Fascinating career. A true legend." Thank yeah, you. and I got a, I got a couple of shout outs for you too, uh, Al. Um, so I was at a, a conference and, and a good friend of mine, uh, 
Chief Master Sergeant Michael Perry. I told him, I was like, hey, man, I'm interviewing I'll Be Sure in a couple of weeks. He's like, bro, that's my favorite artist. I got every one of his albums. So, uh, and, yeah, thank yeah. You. And so, so Chief Mike Perry, uh, I don't know if he's watching, but if y'all know him, in the tag him on the post and uh, let him know that I gave him a shout out. He's our, our head first sergeant in the United States Air Force. So he he's a huge fan. Oh, wow. and, I, and also, uh, I got a good friend of mine. And what's, what's, his name, what's his name again? Uh, Mike Perry. Mike? Chief. Mike Perry, Mike. P E R R Y. Chief Mike Perry, peace and blessings, King. Good to see you. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I also got a good friend who just retired here recently, and she said this would be an awesome retirement gift to have you give her a shout out. Uh, Chief Master Sergeant Michelle Castro. Chief Master Sergeant Michelle Castro, peace and blessings, Queen. Thank you for your service. Thank you for rocking with my heart over the years. Um, it's so, so much appreciated. And, and I got one more. I got seen Master Sergeant Crystal Brown who said that she was going to try to hijack this this Zoom or this, uh, she's going to try to get into the, into the interview some kind of way. I, I, she's not that great at IT, so she's not that great with IT, so I wasn't worried about it. But uh, she's, uh, please give her a shout out. Uh, seen Master Sergeant Crystal Brown. She's my people. She loves, she loves you and she absolutely loves Usher. So she's like, if we ever get uh -huh. Usher, she, she's gonna break my neck if we don't get her on the show. So. Well, well, listen here. Well, let me give you some news. Um, uh, right now, Usher is here in Las Vegas um, at the Caesar's Palace um, doing his residency, and the show is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, he's just he's you know I, I remember you know obviously him being dropped off to us when he was 14 years old, and um, right in the middle of doing his first album, it was funny. We, we, I just I just went to the show a few weeks ago to the opening night, and we talked about it about how in the middle of the album, his voice changed. So he would talk about boys to men. His, oh yeah, he, he went, he, voice changed right in the middle of the album. So we had to recut a lot of stuff, and so it, it was really amazing. But what a talented, amazing superstar he is, and I'm so proud to see where he's at now. I mean, but the show in Las Vegas is phenomenal. It's absolutely amazing. Um, in fact, what I'll do soon on my social media, I'll post our encounter there and uh and you know from the opening night and uh it's just the show gets better every night uh and it's and i love seeing the different people come through that he's worked with and different celebrities so on and so forth you know joining him sometimes and uh but it's it's uh he's just a phenomenal talent amazing singer phenomenal talent and he's another workhorse he's somebody who put the work in and um and is really really stuck to it and i'm, I'm so proud of him because just imagine you know, he's a kid he's 14 years old I mean, he was yes. doing little contests and local stuff and whatever else, and now he's, he's all over the globe. It's really, it's, it's a very tall feat to have a residency in, obviously that's why, you know, in, in Las Vegas, that's why you you know you see the Celine Dion's and the Mariah Carey's and the Janet Jackson's and, you know, the new kids on the block, you know, it's 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 a it's it's quite fascinating. But yeah, the show is always packed and sold out, so I'm very proud to see he's doing this. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I saw Crystal's uh, social media and she went actually a couple uh, to go see Usher. And so, you know, that's I'm sure that's one of the highlights. Yeah, it was it was awesome. And, and I've been seeing clips here and there of, of the show. So I would definitely love to see him in, in live in concert. This sounds yeah. like Chief Chat on the road to me. On the road. We yeah, we'll see Chief Chat there. Yeah, yeah we, got, we got a nice Air Force base in uh, Las Vegas that probably needs all three of us there, right? Yeah, you know what you have. You have. Yes, um, uh, I will see you there. It's Nellis Air Force. You, you base. have um, Nellis Nellis Air Force Base. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I had the blessing of visiting. I had the blessing of visiting the the, the base uh, a few years ago, and uh, you know, and boarding one of the, the the planes. And so, oh man, it was fascinating. It was uh, just seeing that sitting in that big old cockpit and and, and and seeing all the buttons and all the knobs. I thought. Listen, I thought. I thought the studio was something like that. I was like, no, nah, this is, I like it. I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn the fly. Yeah, awesome. And Al, before we say goodbye, so you've reminded us a couple times that you are on social media at official Al Be Sure. Official Al Be Sure. And it, and official and Al Be Sure. it has sure. the check mark. Mm -hmm. So it's Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at official Al Be Sure. Also, um, you can find me at at I am New Jack Sexy on Instagram, and then uh, at Love A N D the letters R N B Radio Show. So Love and R N B Radio Show. 
um, but all of that stuff is in the bio. And so, um, but I, I'd, I'd love for everybody to follow from around the globe where everybody is um, and hang out with me in the mornings. Oh, you know, I do want to say something that that's, that's really significant yeah. to me. Um, I've been I've been heavily immersed in social activism, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as of recent. And it's just, you know, just seeing some of the, the, the activities that go on and so on and so forth. And um, very much so now, uh, right now, probably the biggest thing that's going on besides, uh, you know, the international situation in, in, in Afghanistan and, and God bless the people there um, uh, is right now this voter rights suppression um, and just to think that we have elected officials who are um, signing legislation that will prohibit you from bringing water to your 80 year old grandmother if she was online waiting for to vote and, and, and practice her privilege of voting which is absurd and it's inhumane um, I don't know what the what the uh, you know, the result would be in terms of, I don't know if you get arrested or you get fined or what have you, but it's just, I mean, things of that nature. Any, you know, taking the ballot boxes away, so on and so forth. So August 28th, all around the country, now we mark your calendars, everybody, August 28th, all around the country, um, there will be a march. It's called March On for Voting Rights. Um, march On for Voting Rights. And um, you can actually register um, at National Action network.net so that's national action network.net you can register as an individual or as a group you can bring your church group you can bring a whole army platoon a navy platoon, you know whatever whatever branch you're in um but in your city and you when you visit the, the website you know let them know official alvy Shaw sent you but it'll also tell you the different cities that the marches are going on in um and you know we've got to we've got to get rid of this um you know, voting is a privilege and, you know, everybody should be able to do it and without restrictions and all of the shenanigans that are surrounded by it. Um, and on that day, in, in fact, and if you can't make it out, probably on MSNBC and, and, and C-SPAN and, and some of the different networks, um, uh, we will be hosting, uh, along with, with the Honorable Reverend Al Sharpton, in addition to Martin Luther King III, um, on that day, they will be, you know, hosting the event uh, around the globe and uh, you know you know we, we love to see the work that Reverend Sharpton puts in as it relates to social activism and, and, and really caring about you know people and, and you know the, the brutality and things of that nature so you know, we always want to fully fully support his efforts as well. well that, that's awesome and uh, like I said just uh, we appreciate uh, all that you're doing um, from a music standpoint, from a social activism standpoint, just uh, just how you're just trying to spread goodness into the world. Uh, but before we leave, do you do you have any new mu music coming out? The anything you're working on that you want to talk about? I am. I am here working. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm here working and editing and. Um, in fact, what yeah. Is so uh, is that, just, that velvet? Just, That's <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I gotta have the. You know, gotta have the velvet oh, microphone. Nice. Well. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, yeah, so so I just started, you know, just started working on a new EP, um, uh, and and basically, you know, because I don't ch chase anyone else's sound, it's probably going to be called like my first album. Let me see. I gotta remember how to look. That's great. Right, so, um, in effect, <laughs> in, in effect mode. Um, like 2021 or 2022 or whenever we decide to release it. But, um, but I'm working on that. Also, I'm working on a book called From Mount Vernon to the Moon and Back, the I'll Be Sure Life nice. Story. Yeah. And, then, and then subsequent to that, um, we will be commencing on doing my life story. You know, as like, a, as you saw, the Bobby Brown, a new yeah. edition and so on and so forth. No so that should be really you. interesting. Um, awesome. And I'm, 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 I'm Who's, who's going to be the actor that plays I'll be sure? That's what I want to know. Chief. <laughs> that, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm... we got to we got to get you an audition with, with Chris Giovanni, you know, at C Jam talent, and uh, we'll see, we'll see how that works out. And, uh, and you got to you know get 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 your headshots in there and get your stuff. 
<laughs> we will do the do. Well, uh, I can I can I can lower my voice uh, just a little bit, a couple octaves to the left, and uh, yeah, yeah, I can, I can do that. No, no, my, my voice got, my voice got deeper. My, no, my voice wasn't as deep years ago. It got deeper from all the cigars I must I used to smoke. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's that's the key, Chief. That's the key. Can you handle that? <laughs> yeah, but, I, but I'm not advocating smoking anything. But but uh, yeah, but I, I do like to, to you know I like a, a nice cohiba every every so often. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Have, have your people call my people. Uh, I, I don't have any people. <laughs> <laughs> people. It's just me, but uh, just have them reach out. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Most definitely. Most definitely. But yeah, but thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. This this has been amazing today, and thank you for uh, allowing me to, to to join you on your platform. And I want you to you know have continued success, all of you. Uh, and, and you know, it, it, this was a this was a fun time today. Absolutely, and it, it's been a true honor uh, having you with us today. Uh, man, this means a lot to our military community and the families and that you've impacted. Like I said, your music is is solidified forever. And yeah. so it's going to it's going to live long past uh, you and and just kind of you kind of wrapped it up because I always tell our entertainers that we have on the show that, you know, what you have done for us has taken our mind off of all the, the craziness. And especially if we're downrange in the thick of it um, to know that we can. You know, put your music on it. It takes us to a place of nostalgia, or it takes us to a place of love, or or anything like that, man. It's just it's just a blessing, and uh, like I said, you you have a, such a wonderful spirit, a positive spirit. You you're trying to keep people motivated. We all are are are, are you know are what is that? New Jack Sexy. Like I'm I'm taking that. I'm New Jack Sexy. NewJackSexy.com. Dot com. Absolutely. NewJackSexy.com. So. Uh, I appreciate you for putting that good energy in the world because, like I said, you put good energy in the world, it comes back to you ten times over. So I, that's that's been my mantra, and uh, I, I admire that about you. And and thank you for being a trailblazer for so many uh, in the world. And and we appreciate your time. If you don't mind staying on just for a, a few minutes after, uh, I got a I got something I want to give you uh, for 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 being on the show. So thank you so much for that. Oh, okay. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. So before we leave, uh, before we leave, we got we got to say it together. What's that? I am New Jack Sexy. Is that what we're gonna say? Okay, 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 okay. 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 Ready? 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 But okay. I, but I think I think we have a delay, so I don't know. If, so so I'll, we'll, I'll let we'll you go. Okay. So one, two, three. I am New. I, I am New Jack, Jack, Jack Sexy. Sexy. Dot. There we go. All right, <laughs> dot com. Keep that out. out. <laughs>